Hello and welcome back to the third episode in the How to Build a Model Airport series. Um, in this in this episode, we will cover two things quite simply because they are quite simple. Um, you don't really need a lot of um, sort of skills to do it, um, but you do need patience. Uh, that's one key factor. Um, you know, I've, I, I will admit I've seen many model airports across forums, YouTube, where you can clearly see the person has sort of rushed it and, you know, it basically looks like a mess. Um, obviously, if you're watching this, um, if you're watching this video, you'll be wanting to make it sort of realistic as possible. Um, now, a lot of people say um, they can't draw. Um, you know, people can draw, um, everyone can draw, it's just the fact that they can't, you know, they see, th it's just the fact that people see things in different perspective compared to other people, and, and maybe it's the fact that they can't concentrate enough to actually get the correct sort of shape of something if they're drawing it from observation or something, well that's sort of like this, you know, you, you do need patience, you need to sort of coordinate where you're doing stuff and all that sort of thing so basically um we'll start off with the pens um that arrived um i've already done the basic outlines um on the app i'll show you them in a minute and just a uh, one feature that i've added with the pens also so the pens that i use are uniposca um i ordered these i did used to use unichalk they are basically the same um same company uh uni and then it's basically just a different name. I can't really see anything different with them apart from Uniposca you can actually get actual yellow whereas in Unichalk you get fluorescent yellow um, and I will admit the yellow in the Uniposca pens do look a lot better because when you're actually drawing with the fluorescent one from the Unichalk series it basically looks, uh, I've had a few people comment saying that it looks a bit green um, I will admit this this sort of uh, well if I actually get you a, a correct pen uh, yellow um, as you can see this is yellow this works an absolute treat compared to fluorescent yellow so I'd highly recommend getting Uniposca they are basically paint pens so basically you get paint inside the pen um, you can uh, refill them uh, I'm not really sure how you do that but uh, that I think there's a guide on their website or something. You have like a little guide here on the pen showing you what to do. So basically the first step is to shake it. So when you get the pens, if they are new, you should get them in like a tight um, see-through cellophane packet, um, which can, you might need to sort of use your nail or um, scissors or something just to try and rip it, um, you know. It doesn't really matter if you sort of grave the pen, it's not going to sort of like explode or anything. Uh, but obviously don't put too much pressure on so that you actually, you know, you're not trying to cut through the pen. Um, but yeah, these pens are fairly easy to use. So what you do when you've got it out the wrapper, shake it, shake it, you can ear it inside. Obviously that's the thing that's actually shaking the paint up. And um, then what you do, once you, I'd probably shake it for a good 30 seconds or so. Um, just to get the paint inside moving a little bit and running. Um, then what you do is you actually take the uh, lid off, um, if I can show you. Yeah, so the lid just pops off like an ordinary pen basically. And then you've got a nib, it basically looks like that. The nib is sort of like a felt tip nib. Um, and what you do is you push down on, uh, on a, a piece of paper or something. In fact, I'll just show you now if I can get a spare piece of paper. So I'll just pop the camera down. Now I'll get a piece of uh, coloured paper just so you can see it a bit better. So uh, if I have the camera uh, here, you can, I mean, you can already see that, you know, just by drawing, it comes out fairly, fairly nicely. Um, you, you know, you can see the white stands out pretty well. Um, but yeah, when you first get the pen, you should actually need to push the pen down so that the paint inside actually runs towards the nib. Because obviously, uh, when they're made, the inks or paint um, is made so that obviously it doesn't dry up. Um, 
I think over time these will dry up eventually once you've used them obviously keep the lid on it probably won't dry up as as quick with you know as if you uh, had the lid off then it would dry a lot quicker like any any other pen um, but yeah that's what it comes out like obviously that's just freehand when you're actually doing the model airport lines you need to have a quite a steady hand to be honest um, and patience you know like I say take time you don't want to be rushing it and causing the right mess otherwise the whole project will end up being a mess uh, basically um, but um, yeah so obviously as you can see I've got quite a few pens here um, these are Uniposca, they're all Uniposca, uh, these are size PC3M, um, these are a fine sort of um, nib which I'd probably I'd use for the f fine details, um, not extremely fine details like numbers and stuff but sort of like small lines and sort of, you know sort of like that sort of thing. Um, you know small small basic markings basically so I ordered three of them I'd suggest probably ordering at least two uh, three just to get you um, buy it or in case you sort of you know a pen goes uh, wrong or something these are basically the same these white pens I ordered four of these because obviously different pens you use more of each so you can get three or two if you wish I mean I've only used one in fact no, I've actually used two uh, so far, but they've st still both got ink in them. Um, but I'll move on to why I sort of used two rather than just stayed with the one in a minute. And then we have yellow. Like I said, this is just standard yellow rather than fluorescent. And these two sizes, the yellow and these white ones, are PC five M. So obviously the P the big high the bigger the number, the bigger the actual nib is. Um, so I'd highly recommend getting. Uniposca and PC PC five M for all the major basic details, sort of like the taxiways, the runway, um, stuff like that, and then the finer ones for like little lines, which I'm just going to show you now. Um, so I did like this uh, cross sort of. Um, oh, I'm not really sure what you call it. It's sort of like diagonal line thing. You see this at some, uh, or if not most, UK airports. So at least I've. Uh, I searched on Google, went across a few um, airports, uh, and you know I could see these on the uh, apron. So I thought, you know, it'd be a nice feature. I'm not entirely sure if these are uh, the correct size. They're probably not, but it was just a nice feature. And the way that it came out looks pretty good, um, in my opinion. Um, so um, if you wish, you could actually make these into roads. Um, they are sort of like roads, but they're more for sort of keeping stuff um, out of the way for the wingspan and stuff of aircraft. Um, but it's entirely up to you when you come to do your project. You know, I'm not saying that you have to do precisely what I'm doing. I'm just giving you, oh, I'm just trying to give you a helping hand, to be honest. Um, so that's the pens. Um, now going back to why I've used or used two of these is because. Um, when you're drawing out your basic outlines on the painted surface um, you will need to go very lightly uh, don't be pushing your pencil down hard so that you know the pencil line is really bold sort of do it as lightly as possible you might just need to do the odd sort of bold part now and again just to establish where the line is in, you know in case you can't actually see it um, so the best way to do that is just you know use like sort of like the edge of your pencil just glide it along with a ruler and obviously use for curves like a dish or protractor or something like that um something with a reasonable curve radius um so once you've done that basically what you need to do um is you just get the pen once again using the ruler um which i actually have another technique as well um Right, so this is a ruler, this is a bendy ruler, it doesn't really matter which ruler you use. Um, but from my own experience, um, as you can see, this has got like a, a 3D effect to it, um, if you know what I mean. So it's got like a higher surface on one side compared to the other. So um, this side is the flat side, 
and then this side's got like a bit of a hump to it. Um, I would recommend putting the hump side to flat face down. This then causes like a, a sort of like a, a these two bits uh, on the, each end to sort of you can, you can sort of like flip it. That helps um, or rather prevents uh, the paint from running underneath the ruler. Um, you know, like I say, from past experience, you don't really want that happening because what it is when you remove the ruler, um, say if like you've got it a normal way up, uh, we'll call it that's it. So that's a normal way up. And basically the ink or the paint um, might actually run underneath the ruler. And when you come to remove the ruler, it leaves a re a quite a big or not massive, but you know, like a smudge mark, which doesn't look good. Um, if you, if you haven't got a ruler like this, then uh, where you can actually turn it that way instead, then I'd highly recommend getting water at the side, being careful not to knock it over, um, just in case, and just get a brush uh, or tissue or something, dip it in the water, and then quickly remove the uh, the paint pens, uh, you know, the paint from the paint pen as quickly as possible if it does leave a smudge mark. If you leave it too quick. You know, if your kitchen is like at the other side of the house or something like mine is, by the time you come back, it'll have dried. And trying to get it up or off it will actually end up lifting up the paint, the actual base paint. So, I, you know, that's just a few hints and tips there that I've learned from my own experience. Um, right, we'll move on to the grass now. Um, like I say, I want to keep these videos under 20 minutes. Um, each because obviously it cuts off so the grass uh, basically it's model railway grass um, works perfectly for 1400 scale uh, to be honest any scale 1200 1500 maybe even 1600 although 1600 due to the thickness it's not too thick um, as you can see that's pretty uh, thin but uh, it does work a treat. It's summer grass. This um, you can, I think you can get summer, spring, autumn, and winter. Mostly summer and spring. I've seen, um, uh, but uh, this actually costs ten pound. It's it's not an ideal price. I think I paid a, a little less uh, before. I think I paid like five ninety nine or something. Um, but this was in fact nine ninety nine. But you know, just round it off about ten quid. Um, so you can actually, it, it's not bad, it's fairly cheap considering what you get, the size of it. Um, obviously you might need to buy certain rolls, I'm not sure how big this is. Um, but I've just drawn out my basic outline shapes for each section. And what I'm going to have to do is sort of, um, I'd recommend doing the largest pieces first. Um, Purely because if you run out, then the smaller pieces don't really matter as much. You know, you don't want to be leaving like massive, you know, really doing fine small bits and then leaving a massive gap where a massive uh, piece of grass should go. So do the big bits first. I'd recommend drawing it out like I've done. So this is one section here. You've got another section here and then another section here. And then obviously the rest I'll figure out for extra bits um, that needs to be added um, so yeah this grass is basically easy to cut up you can either use a Stanley knife or something like that a craft knife to actually cut it across I'd recommend using a metal ruler for this um, I've got a metal ruler um, I will be using scissors though uh, purely because I haven't got a surface where I can actually cut it um, you know don't be Obviously, don't be cutting this with a craft knife on the actual board. Otherwise, you'll start leaving uh, grooves in the in the actual board, and it'll make it a mess. To be honest, so don't do that. That can happen. Um, you know, it's one of them common mistakes where people are like, ah, oh, you know, damn, I haven't put out underneath. Um, you know, I oh, I should have moved it or something like that. But that's just something I want to point out in case you do happen to do that. Um, so that's about it for this uh, episode to be honest I hope I've covered the basics that you need to know um, oh just one more thing the grass um, when you're actually uh, sticking it down I'd recommend using standard PVA glue or something it's pretty easy to sit it down on the other side it's just like a 
pa a brown paper sort of thing. So, you know, easy to stick down. It's, it is really nice grass, this. Um, by all means, you can get the sprinkly grass where you get it in a bag and then you sprinkle it, but that just gets absolutely everywhere. Um, that is a real pain. Don't get me wrong, this grass, when you take it out, um, you will actually end up with loads of fine hairs coming off. Uh, as you can see in this cup, that's what's come off this mat. Um, you know, all that, uh, if you can see that in the bottom. It's um, very fine, you will get fine hairs. It's basically like your, your own hair falling out. You know, obvi I mean, obviously you don't really want your hair falling out, but... You know, you get the odd hair sometimes drop because it's, you know, the roots actually come out sort of thing. Um, it's basically like this, you know, once, fine, not all of them, it, don't worry, it won't go bald. Um, unless you start picking every single bit up, you know, with like fine tweezers or something. But it should stay nice and green uh, for the actual layout. And... Uh, Hopefully, well, it should last uh, for many months, uh, many years, to be honest. Um, so don't worry about that. Don't worry about the fine hairs. But just a warning: when you do take it out, there might be hairs like sort of everywhere. Uh, so I'd recommend doing it somewhere where you can easily clean it up. Um, I did it on this board because you can easily wipe off the hairs. I've still got the odd hair here and there that I need to sweep off once I've, you know, once it's sort of ready. So that's it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions about anything that I might have missed regarding the pens, um, you know, both sides. So we've got the PC3M and all these are the PC5M. Or if you've got any questions regarding the grass, um, or if you've got any questions regarding a step that I might have missed out, such as the taxi lines, uh, just remember with the taxi lines or the lines anyway, just use ruler and uh, a standard dish uh, you know something like that or even a protractor if you, can, if you haven't got like a suitable bowl or something uh, you know just something that gives it a nice curve radius you don't want anything too small you don't want anything too big depending on the scale that you're working with um, but yeah hope you've um, enjoyed this episode in the next episode which might be uploaded pretty soon after this video. Um, you will actually start to see the airport come to uh, life with the grass uh, laid down. So hopefully you enjoy looking at the layout that I've sort of done. Um, and I will be adding more details when um, uh, you know when it when the time comes. I'll also talk about my terminal idea uh, in my next episode. So stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't already for more content on this series and more content in the future based on this model airport and many airports to come probably. Um, by all means like and comment if you wish. Um, likes obviously probably help the ratings go up so more people can see it. Uh, that will help a lot because obviously this is what I'm doing it for. I'm doing it for the community of our hobby sort of thing uh, so people can actually see it so if you can like the video that will be very helpful and also comment as well uh, if you've got any questions or message me um, if you've got any questions or if you know me on Facebook or if you want to add me on Facebook then by all means I'm I'm you know I'm gonna be willing to have a chat and help you out if you need any help um, but yeah thanks for watching again um, much appreciated and hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoy the previous videos and the f videos in the future as well. Uh, once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.